custom uh, FFmpeg uh, library into that. But what we were looking into that that many of the chipset vendors are providing a hardware accelerated video playback already through GStreamer. So why not support GStreamer inside of Chromium? Um, so, so we take the, this task and, and we look for various options. So one of the things we looked very early is, is basically replacing FFmpeg with GStreamer, which we realized that it would be a really massive amount of work and it would be very difficult to create any kind of upstream patch that would go back uh, to the Chromium base. Um, so instead of that, we, we decided to go into a similar path that the Flash player is integrated in Chromium, and that's a player that's, that's interfaced through an API called Pepper API. So the Pepper API in, in Chromium is a low-level C API that to which you can you can you can plug in low-level plugins like like the CDM that was pointed out by Mark, and and we created a new plugin based on, on GStreamer that allows fully accelerated video playback inside of Chromium uh, using GStreamer. So here's just an example code that we are already capable to playback a uh, network TS stream using your GStreamer uh, plugin. So all this uh, achievements, what I'm talking about now, you will be able to see on Friday in our demo room. I'm looking forward to see you there. And I think this is all. So any questions? Yes? Yes, so, so basically this is a plugin that, that's, uh, that's added dynamically to, to, to Chromium. So we haven't done significant modifications to, to, to achieve this. Of course, the next step would be that you completely overload the FFmpeg path in, in Chromium. But that's a question still if we want to do that. And of course, if that would be an upstreamable uh, change in Chromium. So next question. The window is system. No, it's not using X11, so it's Aura and and built on top of of, of Ozone. So and our Ozone layer, o Ozone plugin is basically fully based on, on EGL. So there is work ongoing that we are testing now and combination of our EGL Ozone plugin with, with Wayland. But that's that's something we, we are looking forward to finish in the following weeks. Right, so in the current implementation, we, we, we took a shortcut. So our shortcut was that uh, inside of the Chromium UI, so maybe I will repeat, repeat the question uh, since you don't have a microphone. So the question was uh, if, uh, if, uh, um, if there is a zero copy and, and how it affects all these changes, the, the full media pipeline. So um, Basically, what, what we did, we decided to punch a hole inside of the Chromium UI. 
and, and create a transparency towards to the video layer. So, so the actual surface that 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 corresponding to to the video layer in Chromium is in fact just a placeholder ensuring that that we have this transparent hole towards to the video layer. So there is in in fact no exposure of the video buffers to Chromium in in this implementation. Also, performance-wise, we, we consider this the, the most optimal right now. Yes, we 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 actually considering also to to expose the surfaces directly to to Chromium as as one of the options. So anyone else? No one else? Yes. We are using generic EGL implementation, so there is uh, no no specific change that that would uh, limit this to Mali 400. Exactly. Exactly. So this is our first iteration. Basically, we wanted to test it with a full screen uh, EGL window. And since uh, you know one of our targets for these changes is the RDK, where 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 the most of the use cases are containing a full screen browser window with additional UI on the top of the, Top of it. Right. So uh, we we had about twelve, thirteen different parameters. We had to fine tune and also also do smaller patches into into. Chromium to, to make it run. Uh, first of all, to, to be able to run Pepper API plugins. Uh, then um, to disable the full X11 windowing path using Aura, uh, we had to disable some of the features like printing. Um, so uh, we, we can discuss this uh, offline if you if you're interested. Uh, but but we. Spend some time on, on on playing with all the parameters that that we were able to uh, build what we need. More questions? So how is this different from what YouTube offers? Yeah. So what what DJ offers currently is, is you you refer to Qt Web Engine. So Qt Web Engine is, is specifically focused on, on Qt UI, and and we wanted to create something 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 generic that so so this solution can be uh, integrated um, into into Qt as well, but we wanted to keep the possibility for 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 using uh, Chromium. Basically, on any embedded system that that uh, that uses an ARM uh, CPU inside, and, and, and it's running Linux. Um, another change that that we we are actually looking into is that uh, so 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 one of the challenges when when you put a UI on the top of Chromium is that Chromium itself has its own internal compositor and windowing manager. So, in, in fact, whenever you render the UI and you put anything on the top of it outside of Chromium, you have a two-step uh, composition, one inside of the browser and the second compositing your UI on the top of the browser. So what we are looking into right now is actually starting to use the hardware compositor engines of the ARM SOCs and and be able to to put the 
control UI over the browser into separate hardware overlay and the browser into a separate hardware lay, hardware overlay. So that's that's what we consider also also quite a nice achievement of, of this type of approach that we can do that. More questions? No more questions? One, two, three. Questions over. <laughs> Thank you.